In this short video, I want to show how I made a bearing for the filament reel of my 3D printer, just out of spare Lego, massively reducing the friction compared to the standard holder on my Ender 3 Neo, helping out its hard-working extruder, which not only has to feed the filament to the nozzle at an exact rate, has to pull it from the supply reel, which when fully loaded is pretty heavy, so anything that can help turn that more easily will reduce the strain on the extruder and hopefully make for better prints. And this is the LEGO unit I've come up with, strapped to the standard holder with cable ties. It may appear to be a bit patched together, using what looks like a motley assortment of spare parts, but is actually the result of quite a bit of experimentation, and believe me, it does actually work, and at a tiny fraction of the cost of a commercially available bearing. Later on, I'll be 3D printing my own parts, very much based on the LEGO version. So first, let me run through exactly how I made that and the bits I used to make it, rummage from our big box of random parts. We've got a mixture of standard Lego and some slightly more specialist Technic stuff, two types of wheel rim for our rollers, and an assortment of axles and connectors. If you're not lucky enough to have a great big stash of Lego, you can always get individual parts from either eBay or the online Lego pick-a-brick store. Part numbers in the description below, or go straight to print your own from the downloadable files, although you'll still need the Lego wheels and axles. For my pure LEGO version, I'm starting simply enough with a central block. Then I need something to mount my axles. For this I've got some Technic half beams, with cross holes at the end and circles in the middle, which I think came from a motorcycle mini kit, cobbled up by the random box a while back. Into the cross holes I'm pushing my stub axles. These need to be the cream or light grey ones, and not the blue ones which like the black straight connectors are designed for solid joints between components, like I've got here, attaching the beam to my central block. That'll be plenty strong enough for the weight of my filament reel, even when full. Then, exactly the same procedure for the other end, making the total length of my unit the same as the width of the reel, plus a bit at either end, so the cardboard rims of the spool sit nicely on my wheels. And it's those I come to next. For the near side, I've got some spoked wheels with flanges, which will keep my spool straight and prevent it from moving side to side. This will work for any standard single thickness cardboard reel, but it's less good for the plastic ones which can use an unflanged wheel instead, like these ones which I'm using to support the other side of the reel, giving us a wider base and allowing for a little bit of lateral movement. Then with our unit complete, we need a way of mounting it on the printer, and I'm using the standard holder, modified very slightly with a flat area for the base of the unit, sliced off with a multi-tool and flattened with a file. This doesn't actually prevent the holder being used as normal, if for instance you came across a spool that for some reason didn't fit the bearing although most of the time a change of wheels will sort that. Now we need to hold it in place and I'm using a couple of cable ties threaded through that gap in the middle of the central block and pulled tight around the holder. Once again, not the most beautiful solution, but one that really works, both strapping the Lego down and preventing it moving from side to side. The knobbles on the Lego block keeping the cable ties apart, so it stays straight on the holder. This method of attachment is not only very quick to assemble, it's super easy to take apart again just by snipping through the ties. Great for developing the design and making little tweaks along the way. And also for when I want to replace the Lego body with a 3D printed version, which I'll come to very soon. But for this one, I just need to finish by snipping off the ends of the ties and mounting on the printer. The only difference to the standard assembly being using the lock nut the other way round, so it has a tighter grip on the upright and doesn't rotate. Then all that remains is to put it to the test, mounting my spool so it sits on the rollers, fitting the near side rim between the flanges, giving us a smooth, effortless rotation, easing the workload of the extruder, which should make for more reliable prints, particularly in combination with my filament guide, the making and operation of which you can see in another of my videos. This uses the same pulley wheel and axle, mounted on a 3D printed arm, and I want to do a similar kind of thing with my bearing, replacing the Lego body with a 3D printed one. So I've started by reproducing that in Tinkercad, which I can adapt to optimise for printing, which will be done end on. And it's the STL file for this that you can download from my website and print your own, skipping that bit of the Lego build. The upright orientation helps with the cross holes for the axles, but the main difference to the Lego is that I need some 45 degree angles to print the equivalents of my Technic beams and release from the strict adherence to a brick size. The width of my block can be a bit closer to that of the reel so I can be a bit more picky with the choice of wheels, which will fit on the stub axles exactly as before, although the accuracy of my 3D print makes for a bit more haphazard a fit compared to the Lego. 
For this latest version, I've got four matching wheels, the spoked flange ones, which with the extra width of my unit will fit my cardboard spool perfectly. Sadly, these are no longer a standard Lego item, but I found them easily and at a good price from eBay. I'll cover some alternatives and those that suit different spool types right at the end. Now back to mounting the bearing on the holder, and you'll see I've got some holes for the cable ties to thread through and an additional ridge underneath, which helps hold the bearing straight. But otherwise the process is exactly the same as before, pulling the cable ties nice and tight on the other side of the holder and finishing up by snipping off the loose ends so they don't snag on the inside of the reel. Then it's back on the printer, tightening up the lock nut so the bearing stays at the top of the holder where it's ready for the filament spool, the inner rims of which, both front and back, neatly fitting between the flanges. Now as I mentioned, all filament reels are not the same, and while my flanged wheels are a great fit for many of the cardboard ones, simply switching out for a different Lego rim will suit many of the others, either sitting in the groove or riding on the edge. Then for a plastic spool, you can switch out for the wider rims I used earlier, which are much more forgiving for lateral movement, which means it doesn't matter if your reel moves from side to side, and it's very unlikely it'll actually fall off. So just as long as you select the right wheels for your spool, my bearing, the 3D printed or original Lego one, will make a big difference to the smoothness of your filament feed, and in conjunction with my filament guide, should take the pressure off the extruder, improving consistency of quality over whatever you're printing.